Cooper. Welcome to my very first mental health vlog. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, um, but time didn't permit it because I've been touring a ton. Turns out tour doesn't have a lot of quiet places where you can uh, do a video like this. It's really noisy. Who would have thought? So anyway, um, I put out a post on Instagram several months ago inviting people to ask me questions about uh, mental health and I got a really good response. Thank you for everybody, to everybody who sent me in um, their mental health questions. Some great questions. I actually read every single one of them. I wrote a response out to every single one of them in a Word document. Um, in doing this, I realized that there's a lot of overlap, overlap, so a lot of questions that were very similar to other questions. Um, and I thought, it's just I'm going to be repeating myself if I just go and answer every single question that I've been sent. Rather than do that, I'm going to do topics. Um, every time I release a video, it's going to be on a different topic. Um, now, before I proceed any further, I would just want to say that some of the contents of this video may be a bit triggering um, for some people. So, um, just with this in mind, I have listed every single suicide prevention support hotline from around the globe, uh, their contact number is in the information section of this video. If you're not feeling okay at the end of this and you do need someone to speak to, please do contact um, whichever number is sort of fitting to where you're living. Anyway, without further ado, uh, I will get started. So rather than picking just one of the topics for today, what I wanted to do was actually answer the questions about like what the hell my deal is um, and what my own experience with in the mental health world is. Um, so a little bit about me, my name is Booker, already said that. Um, mental health recovery work is one of the loves of my life. I've been working in mental health recovery for seven years now and I've been with the same mental health recovery program for the last six years. Um, before this and in the early years of me doing this, I was studying a psychology degree which I graduated from many years ago. In addition to that I have my own lived experience of mental illness. Um, I was a very crazy teenager growing up until um, about the age of 19, 20 years old. Um, so I dropped out of high school, I was a rogue youth, I was a party monster like you have never seen before. I used to keep journals, I was an asshole as well, total jerk. Sorry, mum and dad. Um, anyway, I was just a troubled youth for whatever reason. Brain hadn't developed or something. Um, but then I came good and I was well for many years. When I was 22 years old, I was very close with somebody who I watched slowly become extremely depressed. Um, he fell into a very, very deep depression. Um, and he started to make attempts on his own life. I decided to move in with him to try to support him. Anyway, this did not end the way I had hoped it would. And one morning I woke up and he was not there. And then eventually I did find him and he had passed away um, by his own hand. And it was extremely, extremely devastating. Um, it's something that I will never not feel sad about, I think. Um, and through that, after the initial intense emotions had surpassed, so the intense grief, anger, guilt, all of that had sort of subsided, I found myself becoming triggered and uh, by by seemingly unrelated things out and when I was out and about I found myself extremely anxious scared that my family was going to die all the time scared that someone else was going to pass away um, not necessarily through suicide but like just 
mortality became a real thing for me. Um, I realised that people could die at any stage, um, even if I told myself they wouldn't. Um, if anyone wouldn't answer the phone, I would not be able to cope. I would start to Google traffic reports and try and – I was convinced that they had died, essentially. So you can imagine, like, that that was pretty debilitating. Um, in addition to that, I had nightmares and I was – had moments where if I was in a similar enough environment to the one where I had found him or if something, if I saw something even remotely similar in my mind, I would be put back in that moment. I would feel like I was back in that moment and I'd feel all of the emotions that I felt when I, when I first saw him and first realised um, what he had done. And so I would relive that moment over and over throughout my week and it started to um it started to affect everything it affected my relationships my friendships my work everything I would find myself sometimes in bed unable to get out of bed just watching the ceiling fan on my roof just spin over and over for hours and hours and hours I went to my GP and discussed this with her and she wrote me up a mental health plan and diagnosed me with post-traumatic stress disorder and depression and anxiety. So through this, I went and saw a fantastic psychologist who we practiced mindfulness and um, cognitive behavioral therapy together and it changed my life. And through working hard and allowing time to heal me as well, I have now recovered. Um, I am living proof that it is possible. If he was still around, I have many things I would love to say to him such as nothing is immune to the effects of time. Time brings with it change and change means change. It means that whatever you're feeling at the time, you will not feel that forever. We never feel an intense emotion for too long. It's like we have these crazy, amazing emotional immune systems that will always bring us back to like a baseline level of happiness. Um, so and there's actually like a lot of research into this, into this baseline level of happiness that, you know, no matter what life events sort of happen, we tend to always find our way back to this plateau. Years ago, psychologists studied, um, people, a group of people who had recently become quadriplegics and paraplegics and a group of people who had recently won the lotto and they tested their immediate, their, you know, their overall sense of happiness and life satisfaction. And would you believe it, the lotto winners were the happiest. But this was just immediately following um, these big life changes. So like they're on a high, people obviously who are living in a wheelchair now are devastated because they've lost something huge, whereas the others have gained something huge. Um, fast forward a couple of years and um, they measured the same on life satisfaction and overall happiness. The things that we think will destroy us and ruin our lives forever tend not to. And this is called poor effective forecasting. It's where we we have a very – we're not very good at like – at um, anticipating what we're going to feel when things happen. Something to think about if you are someone who lives with anxiety, you, you tend to feel worse about what might happen than what you'd actually feel if it did happen. Um, but the point is, is, is that no matter how dark things get, if you can just sit through that, seek help, do what you need to do to, to just get through that really hard part, that hard, those hard, horrible feelings that you might be feeling, you will get past it. It's like, you know, you will, you will see, you will see relief. Believe me, there's no, you can't stay in a state of despair forever. If you work at it and if you allow time to do its job and just comfort yourself by knowing that it is a temporary thing, that all emotions are temporary. They are fleeting. They do not last forever. Just knowing that I think can 
but I know it gets me through any hard time that I come up against now, just knowing that it will pass. So that is, that's my story. And, um, and um, each time I release a video, it will be focusing on a different topic. So this is just a little introduction. This is my story. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing more of your guys' stories out there. So please, please do email me. My email is in the link in, in the information section below. Um, and if you would like to see more of these mental health vlogs, I will be uploading them as promptly as I can over the next couple of weeks. Next one will be on social anxiety. That is something I have personally dealt with as well. Um, and it seems like a lot of you guys out there are also coping and dealing with um, your own social anxiety. So please click like and subscribe. I think that's what you say at the end of a YouTube video. If you would like to, um, if you would like to watch these videos again in the future. And I would just like to thank you for joining me. Have a lovely day.